Welcome back. Now I'm going to talk about the, cent the concept of the center of mass and its relationship to a, a phenomenon known as stable equilibrium. We have two phenomenons that are related, stable equilibrium and unstable equilibrium. So which one causes, when do we have a stable versus an unstable equilibrium? In physics we learned that a stable equilibrium is such that uh, it, it is a minimum potential energy of the system, right? So to create a stable equilibrium, Okay, notice it's oscillating back and forth around that stable equilibrium point, right? Uh, it's not falling. If it was unstable, as soon as I displaced it a little bit, it would uh, fall. So what you have here is you have the person, okay, they're balancing on one leg like this on a very sharp point, very sharp point, okay, like this. And this is equilibrium, but if, this, if the person didn't have these two weights on the side, this would be unstable because their center of mass would be here, right? If I displaced it from equilibrium, what would happen if I displaced him from the equilibrium point? Here's their one leg, and this is the point of uh, contact, right? What would happen? Uh, let's say I displaced it a tad bit more. So what would happen? Their center of mass, which used to be here, is now going to be here, right? So by uh, rotating it, what has happened? The center of mass of the system has gone below the original point. So that means this point would be a point of the highest maximum potential energy, right? On the potential energy graph, like this. Right, so a point that is uh, maximum potential energy gives you unstable equilibrium, unstable. So when you displace, when you rotate him, the potential energy goes down, and then what, what happens? The system likes to go towards lower potential energy, so it's just gonna go down the potential energy well, and it's gonna cause it to fall, right? Now, the reason that they made these two red things on the side, right, is because we want to lower his center of gravity. Okay? So when these two round things like this, so what does that do? The thing that he's holding. It brings the center of uh, mass right here, below the contact point. See this, uh, the contact point is right there, the sharp contact point. The center of mass of the system has to be below that contact point. That's one very important thing. In order to be an equilibrium system, the center of mass has to be below the contact point. Here, the center of mass has to be right above the contact point, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't even be an equilibrium, right? It would fall immediately. So if the center of mass is right above the contact point, this is equilibrium, but it is unstable equilibrium. Why? Because it is a point of maximum potential energy. Here, the center of mass has to be right below the contact point and its equilibrium, and it is stable. Why? Because if I uh, rotate him, what will happen? Okay? If I rotate him, imagine I, I'm going to kind of exaggerate it here. Right? And then this is the point. So then this is the, the thing that he's holding. All right, so what happened to his center of mass? Remember, it used to be here, right? It used to be here, then it's gonna go back. It's gonna go up like this a little bit, center of mass. So notice what happened. The potential energy actually went up, his potential energy, right? So if we compare this, go down, go like this, you see? The potential energy of him and whatever he's holding is down here, right? MGH, right? Then if you compare this to here, the potential energy actually went higher, right? Systems like to be toward, uh, in a state where their potential energy is at its lowest, right? So if we do the potential energy graph of this one, it's going to look something like this. Imagine continue this graph like this. Uh, this system is in the lowest potential energy possible. Whereas if he wasn't holding this, he was at the maximum potential energy, right? If I displaced him, he, he would fall down, right? 
So then, now if I displace this one like this, the potential energy goes up, that means the potential energy goes this way or the potential energy goes this way. Well, what happens? Well, just think of a regular ball. If, uh, if you take a ball that is in a valley and you displace the ball, the ball is gonna wanna go back to the, the, the valley, right? It's gonna start oscillating like this. Here, if you displace a ball from the maximum potential energy, it's gonna roll down. If you displace it this way, it's gonna roll down that way, right? So this is the principle behind why uh, rope walkers hold this big long stick in them that is very heavy and it lowers their center of gravity below the contact point, right? At least, even if it doesn't lower it completely below, it at least lowers it somewhat and enables them to make the walk easier, right? So I'm gonna uh, show this again, displace it. See, you can see it oscillating. If I try to displace it too much, it might fall because the point is very, very sharp. Okay, this is actually pretty good, you see. I tried displacing it a lot, and you can see that it is oscillating. So basically it's going this way, you see, back and forth. This is also another example like this, you see. I can uh, take this, try putting it on this. Let's see if that will work. This one might fall because, you see, right here. You see, the, this is so heavy, it brings the center of mass below the point. So now if I displace it, you see, like that, it oscillates back and forth. So look at it from this angle. I'm gonna displace it, you see. If this weight wasn't here, what would happen? I displace it, it would fall immediately, right? So this will actually worked. Not bad. I could put this on any surface like this, right? And have it be stable equilibrium. Displace it from equilibrium, it would oscillate. I could put it on my finger. I could go like that. You can see it oscillates. See the center of mass is right below my finger and it is, uh, it is um, minimum. Now, if I put it up like this, of course, right, and try to do it the opposite, it's immediately gonna fall. I mean, it's very hard to achieve equilibrium even like that, you see? Um, let's see, can we do this one? Can I try to achieve equilibrium here with a marker? Yeah, as long as the center of mass is right above the point, but it's very hard to achieve it because a slight deviation is gonna cause the marker to go down, you see? It's very hard to achieve stable equilibrium. Uh, it's very hard to achieve unstable equilibrium because tiny deviation from the equilibrium will cause it to fall down, you see, like that. Okay, now one example of unstable equilibrium is you can just kind of put something over the edge. Imagine I put this over the edge of the counter this is a, also an example of unstable equilibrium. I put it at the edge of the counter, you see? Such that its center of mass is right on the, right? Now if I displace it from equilibrium, it's gonna fall. Or I could put it at the edge of the table. You see, right now, it's barely balancing on the edge of the table, you see, the marker. If I displace it this way, towards the plateau, it's okay. But if I displace it away from the plateau, you see, then it falls. That was a point of unstable equilibrium. Why? Because the potential energy was high. When I displaced it, it prefers lower potential energy, right? So that's a good example of unstable equilibrium. Any point where the potential energy is at its max is uh, unstable equilibrium. But these two cases with the person, with this one, you see, this is stable equilibrium. You can balance it like this, you see how it oscillates. And then this one, the other one is also uh, stable equilibrium, okay? So you can see here the concept of center of mass and its connection to stable versus unstable equilibrium, okay? Thank you very much.